Hey everyone, I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Uh, we've come back in pretty much fresh from the last one. Because I had some good time and I didn't need to do anything between episodes. I hung out for a little bit, but whatever. Yeah, give me that Uncharted shit where I just cut through levels and levels of design. And to beat up more werewolves, though. I guess the implication is that, like, because werewolf can, like, a werewolfism can be transmitted way easier because it's just a simple bite and not like a a bite and suck ritual. Ooh, now we're mixing it up. That's good, actually. I like that. Oh, interesting. You can use light magic to shake off the poison. That's actually kind of smart. Oh, and they give you a little. Okay, so now that I'm actually in a fight and I'm using this, it actually is pretty intense to, like, try to, like, get the light magic off. Because, like, you're empty, you need it, you need to stop and do the animation. Like, that's cool, and that's, that's actually smart. Initially, I was a little, um, cautious of it, playing it with, you know, the benefit of understanding game design a little more, but, like, now I'm like, yeah. More of those, please. Sweet. You are topped off on daggers, Mr. Belmont. Please, save some for the rest of us. So yeah, I also really like the um, design Belmont has. Like, I love the good, big, imposing shoulders. I love the red. I love the gold trim. I love the blue-black. Um, like, if you were to do something crazy and say... All right, loud and clear. If you were to do something really crazy and remake, like, Castlevania 2, I imagine that this is what Simon in that game would look like. He would probably, you know, look like this, because that's the red tunic with the black trim he wears. Also, you know what? The flame whip is cool. Man, it is like... I don't know if it's, like, interesting in a way that they, like, give you the idea and they're like, oh, man, what if, you know? Oh, brother. Lore-wise, what is that? Look, we had too much fun. We got to slow it down and, and gradually go through here. Go ahead and pause this if you would like to. All right. I mean, like, I know that we actually literally already got the spoiler that we're going to have shadow magic. Because, like, we saw a thing that said, hey, you're going to have shadow magic. But, like, the fact that they outright call it light magic and not just, like, magic. And they're like, the light magic combat. Like, it does imply that you're going to get it. And, like, they gave me light magic. They put it on the left bumper. The right bumper does nothing. I wonder what's going to happen. Again, a similar concept to the God of War reboot, which did this in a very clever and well-handled way. Um, as well as the uh, Devil May Cry reboot, which handled this in a kind of mediocre way. Um, I do intend to let's play it. I don't actually hate it that much. Wait, so what do I do here?
Right stick's not doing anything for me. Should I go back? Oh. Okay, word. I love the big skeletons. Anytime you put a giant, like, just gigantic fuck-off skeleton, it instantly excites me about the lore of something. You know, like that giant skeleton in the background of the, um, that stage in Guilty Gear Strive. I've been following the trail of Gandalfi, famed alchemist and fellow of the Brotherhood of Light. I don't know what drove him to leave the Order or indeed why he disappeared, but we could use his skills, that's for sure. It said he created many magical weapons and hides them. For some reason. Oh my god, have we just turned all the turned all the way around? Well, I guess we're supposed to go this way. The game isn't particularly strong when you're just running around exploring things, kind of lost. Um, and, like, the climbing stuff is okay, but, like, the combat is actually really solid. Um, there was something that Mad McMuscle said about this game. I, I think it was just, like, a blanket statement that he happened to say while playing this game. Uh, but he mentioned that, like, any game that has a perfect parry, like, super timing system, where, like, hey, just hit this on the exact right time and you get a cool parry and, like, there's a unique animation and everything... Like, just having that in the game will all automatically, like, add value and style and fun and shows that you have something. And it might be a false positive thing. Because, like, if, you ha if your team has the coding dexterity to put a perfect parry system in a game, then maybe, you know... Man, these guys have a lot of health. Maybe it's something where it's like, you know, if your team actually has the dexterity to put a perfect parry system in your game, then, you know, maybe obviously the combat's going to be good because that takes a little more, you know, com complex game design. But on the other hand, like, look, if having a good parry is just how we tell if a game is good or not, I'm fine with that, you know? Parries are fun. Parries are cool. Conceptually, like... Oh, man. I'm not particularly good at doing it in this game because of the way that you have to, like, pull the trigger and hold it to parry. I don't fully understand that. It might actually be easier than I suspect it to be, but... I think I must have accidentally just hit up there for some... Or down for some reason. Alright, where are we going now? This looks like kind of the same area. A runic stone key. Gabriel, put the daggers down. You can't hold anymore. Don't bother putting, don't bother animating putting it in it. Like, it's just the dagger animation, but it slowly lowers a key into there. I love how I'm just getting more and more shit on my screen as well. That's only kind of a joke. Like, I love that, like, just had my magic. And then the tutorial gave me my daggers. And then I started to get the other things. And then I got the magic. And now I have the keys on, the, on my screen. Where the hell am I going? This way? Okay, so maybe there was another path back this way that I missed. Because I, I found that going further that way was the correct way. So I mentioned this in my last few Castlevania LPs, but currently Castlevania is actually pretty shit. Currently Castlevania is kind of dead. Um, it got a very critically acclaimed Netflix anime series. Um, it's probably the best anime on Netflix. Eh, I've heard Dora Hedora is pretty good, but I haven't seen it. Um, 
one thing that actually bugs me about Netflix is like, on the one hand, yes, it's good that like, oh, I want to binge watch this series. Okay, well, Netflix releases the whole season at once, so you can. But on the other hand, like, there's something that I noticed where like, back in the day, you would watch JoJo coming out on Crunchyroll, you know? JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. An anime I like. An anime that also likes Castlevania, if you didn't know. Guys, can you please? I'm so far away from all of them, too. Like, I don't know what I'm supposed to be hitting. I don't know where they are. I don't know what I am. All right, now please be quiet. Um, back in the day, you would watch JoJo, and like, holy shit, it's JoJo Friday. There was this long-standing meme uh, tradition where you, people would be like, it's finally a Friday, and it's just an edited shot of the manga where um, I think Polner F. Jotaro and Joseph are saying something. And then the three main characters of Part 4, or like whoever you believe the three main characters of Part 4 to be, would do a similar thing. And, like, they use the anime version, and, like... And, like, that's cool, you know? It's a cool moment of the community, and, like... You know what? Hey, we all get to sit down. It's Friday. We get to watch the new JoJo episode. That's fun. And so JoJo released um, on Netflix, and they released the first couple episodes of... Part 6. Jojo releases in parts. Whoops. Nah, I need it anyway. Um, we've had five of them so far. We're on to part 6. And they released all the parts at once. And people don't fucking talk about them, you know? Like, it's a shame and it's annoying and it's totally Netflix's fault. Because, like, we could be having threads where every week we're talking about the new JoJo. And like, oh shit, new JoJo, you know? We're hype. We love JoJo. New JoJo's coming out. We're excited. Hell yeah. Good shit. Oh, that's why they doy. I've just been sitting here talking about JoJo like some kind of dumbass. Some dumbass who likes JoJo. Can I? Thank you. I have been trying to grab them. I didn't know that I needed them or something, but doy. Should have known, really. That was good that they let me walk the attack. I like, I like when a game lets you walk attacks. Like, we have been deprived of, of JoJo Fridays now. Because all the JoJo shit just comes out on one day, and then everyone who gives a shit all watches it in one day, and they're like, well, cool, I guess I'm done with JoJo now. And then they talk about it for, like, maybe a week after. And then it's done, you know? And JoJo's over. And, like, Netflix, it's kind of emblematic of Netflix in general. It's something that sucks about Netflix as a company. But, like, the way that they do that, the way that they, like, drop the whole season and, like, oh, shit, now we fucking talk about this because we watched the whole season. And, like, it act I feel like it actively makes people watch the show less. Because, like, now instead of, whoops, now instead of, like, having the moment of, like, oh, man, what's going to happen next episode? Like, people might not care. Because, like, someone else, because, like, now you don't even need to know what, you don't need to wait. Like, what happens next episode is going to be told to you immediately. And like, that's like a shame, you know? Like, now you just miss out on that. And like, you know, Netflix does it because they want more money quickly, but like, artistically speaking, you would get more done. It would be way better if that was not the case.
Like, think about how much people gave a shit about Game of Thrones. People were talking about it, and then they would say, oh man, what the fuck's gonna happen next week, you know? They would do that in The Walking Dead. Like, both of those are adaptations. You could just go read the book for Game of Thrones and find out what happens next. You could read the comic for Walking Dead and find out what happens next. But like, no, you want to see the show though, and people would watch the show, and they'd be like, aw damn, you know? And, like, even though if you really want to binge JoJo, like, you don't need to binge it on Netflix the day it comes out. You can just go binge the manga. Like, people are willing to wait for JoJo. And, like, it is such a shame that, like, they, they just skimp out on that. Um, and it's why initially I did support the idea of, like, Castlevania releasing short seasons regularly. But then they kind of stopped doing that. And that was also a shame that I, I don't actually agree with. Because, like... I feel like if, if we had weekly shit and it's like, oh man, you know, it's, it's JoJo Friday or it's like, it's Castlevania Thursday. Like, what's going to happen this week? I don't know. Um, but on the topic of Castlevania, I just wanted to vent my complaint about Netflix and I wanted to do it without talking about Castlevania to show that it's a systemic problem with Netflix and not a Castlevania thing. That's just one of the fun things that I do. It's my charm point. It's a character trait. This level actually wasn't too bad. Like, it's nice and fun. Sorry, it's my, my face is itchy for some reason. It's almost like I've got a lot of shit in my eyes. A lot of grease paint, like some kind of member of the cure. Oh man, I've almost got the Satan number. 665. I feel bad for that guy in, in the note. I mean, I guess it was also the, just the dead guy on the floor, but, like, he was like, I'm looking for this guy, and, like, you were so close, bro. You just didn't have the cool Belmont skills, I guess. So, um... Yeah, right now, Castlevania's a little dead. Because we haven't gotten a new game in a while. Like, the last new game was the sequel to this one. And it released in, like, 2013, I want to say. I think there was a mobile game that released after that. And we've been getting ports of Spike Chain. Uh, built two different chains for the Combat Cross, but this one was never approved for obvious reasons. I just thought the spikes were too cruel for the holy nature of the weapon. Instead of destroying it, the artisan hid the links in one of the mausoleums, believing it might be needed. You can tame dangerous monsters by looping it around their necks and bash through obstacles. Interesting. Get this out of my thing. Like, I know that Castlevania already is, like, a meeting point of monsters, and, like, it's a crossover thing for a whole bunch of monsters to show up together. But, like, just the fact that they have, like, bold-faced, straight-up goblins is, like, maybe that's a little generic. You know? Got enough, got enough cash or something? Area Counter-Strike. Oh, that's cool. I Something that you also get with a whip that you cannot get with, um... Wait, what? Something that you get with a whip that you cannot get with, um... Other weapons is, like, you have such a, a move to get it around your body to move with the weapon. Um... Like, obviously, the first pro tip you hear about any weapon is to treat it like an extension of your body. And when you're just swinging a sword around, then whatever. But when you're using, like, something that's jointed, like nunchucks, I'm uh, a fervent user of nunchucks, or a whip, like, you get a lot more of that. And, like, it's a really cool thing. Because, um, like, with a knife, you're just gonna, you're just gonna poke at a guy, you know, you're gonna stab him. With a sword, you're gonna slash. Like... There's only so many cool things that you can do with the sword. Because, like, at this point, there have been so many cool anime and, like, comic book and video game guys who have had a sword. And I've seen them do cool shit with a sword. And, like, there's only so much cool shit that you're going to be able to do with a sword, for God's sakes, you know? It's just a stick made of metal that's kind of sharp on some sides. Not to downplay a sword, but, like, they're cool, but, you know, they're a little overused sometimes. And, like... That's why, conceptually, the whip is, like, 
There we go. That's why the whip is such a cool concept for Castlevania. The fact that you saw it, it's almost like an acoustic chainsaw. I guess it's a chain that saws, so yeah, but... That's kind of cool, actually. Hey, lead magic gem. Um, just a heads up for everyone. I might come through, uh... Oh, there was another door I had to break. There's no map I can check or anything, right? Um, I might sweep back through a lot of these levels and go level grind or go find the items that I'm missing. You know how it is. Wait, what? So, um, for those who haven't watched it, the Castlevania anime is actually an adaptation of Castlevania 3. So if you watched my LPs of Castlevania 1 and Castlevania 2 and you wanted to see 3, just watch that anime. But um, a good, like, 20-something years after that, uh, that game came out, it got a sequel. And, like, I know that there are Castlevania games and they're all, like, direct things that lead from one to the other to the next. But, like, it got a direct sequel. Like, it takes place just after 3 happened. Um, and they actually started working those characters and that plot into the anime. Cause like season two, like, cause like season one is just like the preamble. I mean, arguably it has some stuff that happens in the, in Castlevania three, like in Castlevania three, you meet various party members. All right. Got to go here. Uh, you meet party members and you can swap between them. It plays very similarly to uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon because Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is directly inspired from Castlevania 3 specifically. Um, and if you remember, I mentioned that I played that game in an earlier episode of this very LP, and I did. Oh, did I miss the thing in here? Because I'm not sure of where I'm meant to go next, and maybe I just missed a thing in here. Yup. That was stupid. Well, actually, I'm glad that I did that because I would have missed that other thing. Yeah. Cool. A labyrinth entrance. So he has found another oh, of Gandalf's upgrades. This was do. unforeseen, though it should prove useful in the challenges to come. The lost city of Aghata looms before him. I wonder if you know what truly lies ahead for you, Gabriel. What God has in store for you. The land of the Lycans. This ruined city now belongs to their lord, and you can be sure he will not allow you to pass without forfeiture of your life. But in order to bring her back, you need to defeat him, my friend. You need to crush him into the dust, like the worm that he is. All right, we're back. Like the worm that he is. That's pretty sweet, actually. This game's fixed camera angles are pretty sweet. This is when, like, fixed camera angles were basically on the way out. Oh, it's a pheasant. Oh, right, yeah. What's with the fucking camera, dude? Is it supposed to be, like, a thing looking at me? Because it's, it's over here. That doesn't work. Yeah! Borars. That hit me. I didn't notice. Sorry, I'm just legitimately enjoying this combat and the animations and like, oh, this game's pretty good, y'all. Sometimes I wonder that I play too many good games.
Did that say Warthog or Warhog? Because both of those are pretty funny. Hey, you remember mounts? They were earlier in this game. And in the classical God of War style. Perhaps you could take a run up. Perhaps I could. Let me... Let me get my run up going. Oh, okay, that's actually pretty nice. This is pretty cool. Yeah, I'm digging this. This works. Like, it feels unwieldy and, and pretty, like, messy to strangle your mount. I guess because it's a, um, it's a spike chain and, like, you know, carrying a stick, it's only moving because it's trying to avoid the chain in its throat. But then, like, you know, I could also just squeeze it a little tighter. Um, so I don't think that Castlevania 3 would actually have enough stuff to do a, like, show. We would have gotten season 1, and then season 2 would have been the length of season 1. So it would have been 8 episodes, and I don't really know if that would have been worth it for, like, such... For the drought that we had. Because, as I mentioned, we have not had a lot of Castlevania games. The last, like, big, meaningful Castlevania launch was Lords of Shadow 2 in 2013. Which was, like, four years before the anime... And then the anime was the biggest thing that we've had since then. And we got four whole seasons of that. Um, and they cover... Like, season one just covers Castlevania 3. Season two finishes up Castlevania 3 and covers, I think, Curse of Darkness is the name of it. Uh, again, like, God, I gotta tell apart all the Castlevania games, but they're all named something like Blood of Night or Darkness of Song or Lament of Something. You know? I think that's I think it's a I think it actually predates him, but it's a pause this if you would like. This is just a tutorial. I think it predates him, but Brian David Gilbert used the bit in his Castlevania uh, monster fuckability video. Where like um you put like your birth month and your birth day together and it or like the first letter of your name and the date of your birth so you know 1 to 26 1 to 30 and combining those gives you a a castlevania game name and it's like 30 30 synonyms for song or poem and then 30 words that are like synonyms for dark light um night shadow uh blood synonyms Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Yeah, I think the game is Curse of Darkness. Where do I go from here? Hello. Should I just go back, or am I not like? hitting up correctly because of the way that the camera thing changes. What am I what's what's happening here? I hate I hate when stuff like this happens where just a little disconnect between the player and the game and like uh you know Okay. You just gotta hit down and jump. There we go. I kind of figured I'd have to charge that up. But yeah, Curse of Darkness is the game that kind of has... The elements of, um... Oh, this, is a, this is one with a lot of stank on it. There's a lot of slack in that chain. Huh? 
Okay. I'm just trying to not get, you know, fucked over by the dick wolves here. Oh, I hear him coming. I like that um, almost every attack in this game has a big orange flash on it to let you know. It's a clever way to just be like, hey, an attack is coming out, you know? And then Gabe also has his... um, Like his big, almost purple, like bluish light. That's a gorilla, dude. I actually like this. I like this shot. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> this game is really solid, guys. Also, I really want to mention the Steam port. Like, Konami sucks as a company, okay? Konami absolutely blows as a company. Konami is terrible for game developers. Wait, what is this? Is this, is this a pot of daggers? Is it a gourd that's full of daggers? Kind of weird. But yeah, so Konami sucks as a gaming company. They suck for developers, and in a lot of cases, they suck for players as well. They're not as bad as, like, EA or something, but they might be the, they're the worst Japanese company off the top of my head. Though Nintendo is getting deeper and deeper onto my shit list. Um, you know, Nintendo's uh, policies on, like, ports are getting rather irritating. Oh, that feels so good. I love a good long chain. Man, Gabriel must be fucking yoked, dude. Like, the amount of strength necessary to whip around a chain like this, like, this is this is a big chain. Like, this is something that you could, like, chain somebody's, like, garden shot with. But anyway, Konami kind of sucks, right? Um, that's funny. Gotta jump that one, huh? Wow. Can't see shit, Captain. I don't know what the purpose of that is. Is it this? Oh, there we go. Yeah, I love staking a guy. You got your big old uh, God of War action command kills, you know? Hmm? What's not clicking here, video game? Does it not go here? Do I put this somewhere else? Am I not doing the right thing? Look, I'm a simple I'm a simple Belmont. I see something glowing that I can interact with, I'll do it. Okay, weird. I don't know why it wasn't working. Um anyway, yeah. So Konami kinda sucks as a company, yeah? But recently, their Steam releases have been, like, really solid. Like, legitimately solid. Like, the release for this game is very simple. It runs in a very nice windowed mode. I can just click in and out, which makes it very easy to record. Um, Because I can just go to OBS, and I can click back into the window, and I can have it. It's so nice, convenient, and easy. Gabriel, you fucked it up. Um, 
Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of clean clean living here. Oh, I want to I want to get one of these big whammos. I need it. I need it, fam. Circular chain. Oh, I actually can buy one of these. Oh, interesting. That's cool. I actually I actually want that pretty bad. Oh, and these all have upgrades. Sweet. That makes sense because you want to get this upgrades to your basic whip stuff. Many layers, each one being the foundation for the too. next. It is a labyrinthine maze of dead ends and forgotten walkways. Danger lurks around every corner. He has shown great resilience, but this journey will take him longer than anticipated and deeper than any man has ever ventured in centuries. He will need all his wits to find an alternative route into the heart of the city, where his destiny awaits him. All right. I like that you can see the door and that it's still in one piece from the last level. Wow, that guy got it really hard. I like that we haven't had a lot of talking. Like, we've had, um... Go ahead and pause this if you want. Man, that's pretty fucked up of that note. Of that guy in that note. Oh, I've also just realized that um, if RB is going to be shadow magic and RT is grab, then your right buttons are both heavily aggressive, you know? And that's also your, your attack buttons as well. And then um, your left hand is all defensive. Because you get your dodge, your block, simple movement... And light magic. This feels really good. I might even like it if the if the camera was a little closer and like almost over the shoulder, you know? That can be a really hard thing to get right. Like God of War nailed it, and God Hand nailed it, but in a very sloppy way. Like God Hand is a very sloppily put together game that works in a way that I don't fully understand. God Hand is so weird because, like, it's trash, it's terrible, it's a really ugly-looking game. It's also pretty much almost perfect. Like, that game is built around its combat and has nothing else to offer you. Besides, like, gambling and looking at girls. Like, gambling on Chihuahua races, I think. Wow. They can web stuff. Kind of interesting that they would give you so much content for writing stuff, you know? Ooh, that's pretty aggressive and very scary. I'll strangle you with, with your neck. You know, your neck that you have. There's a very clever thing that the God of War reboot does. I, I mean, say I say reboot, but it's just the fourth game. Um, where you get an item. It says, you need three of these to increase your health. You get the second one. You find a chest that looks identical to the chest that you pulled the other two out of. And you're like, oh yeah, it's time to increase my health. And then you find a new different item and it says, you got a new item. This one will increase your meter. Find another, uh, find another two because you need three in total. It's very clever. Is there like a combo mad for this game? Because that might be interesting.
you know, part of the reason that I'm playing this is because whips are really not good in Dark Souls games. Like, I, I do want to play a Souls-like. Because after Unworthy kind of sucked, I'm like itching for a proper Souls-like. And like, I totally didn't get it with Unworthy. So like, now the need is even worse. Um, and I can't play Elden Ring because my wife has dibs. Uh, I don't really care that much though. I'm happy to wait. Press A to get loose. Hell yeah, Gabe. Throw it back. I had something to say about the anime. Oh yeah, I think three, uh, season three, like, gets derailed. And it's partially because of weirdo director shit happening behind the scenes. And partially because of, like, I wasn't even looking. I don't know what I was doing there. I just totally let myself get hit. That's on me, everyone. All right, that's my new move. I actually kind of like that. Whoa. Oh yeah, I got air combat too. I've totally just been sticking to the ground. I'm playing like a classic Vania where like, you want to spend the smallest amount of time in the air that you possibly can. All right, shanking more werewolves. But yeah, I feel like the anime gets like derailed in in three, and then season four just has a little bit too much swearing, but like it's really good and has a lot of other good stuff, and like. I'm very excited to see them do, like, a Simon Belmont after this. You know, starting with Trevor Belmont, obviously you get more characters. Go ahead and pause this if you want to read. This really just looks like a tutorial note. Um... So yeah, one thing about picking Trevor instead of anyone else is that Richter goes into the castle alone and then he does occasionally find uh, some other girls. I forget who they are. I think it's Maria Renard and Raynard. And Sophia? Somebody else. Um, but yeah, you get both of those for doing that. And that's cool. Um, and so, like, doing more Richter stuff might be interesting, but, like, one thing that was really good about the Castlevania anime is, like, you have multiple characters to, like, talk to and look at. I like that we got a little sneak preview of this guy last, uh, last level. Ah, he tricked me by doing his little dance. He's got the big ground pound. Damn. He's icing my fucking cake here. Wow. This is a mess. This is a messy fight. You should take a break after this. Yeah, one thing that I do really like about the Castlevania anime is that, like, you get a lot of good multiple character dynamic stuff. Like, you get stuff where, like, Alucard and Cypher could be the smart one, and Alucard and Trevor can be, um, uh, the fighting guys, um, and Trevor and Cypher can be... Damn. I'm getting fucked up here, bro. Um, and Trevor and Cypher can be, like, very human... You fucked Alucard. You're not human. You know how it is. He's got a charge. I was focusing on this little guy. Should not have done that. I love that they have like a meaty explosion. Can I? Can I speak with one of you up here, please? Damn. Ah, I see. In the traditional God of War style. Make 
makes sense, you know? All right, cool. Um, I assume that I'll have more time to talk about the Castlevania anime next time, but suffice it to say, I really do like the character dynamics, and they started with three, which is the only game where you have a party, and, like, there are other games with multiple characters, but, like, that is the only game with a straight up and down party, and, like, you might really miss that if you go adapt, like, a Simon thing, because, like, Simon goes into the castle by himself, and then he fucks around Zorovia or, um... Transylvania or, or Wallachia or whatever it's called. Um, and then maybe he does it again or something. But yeah, like you would miss out on that dearly if you did a Simon thing. And like Richter doesn't really have a party. He has people he knows and there are other playable characters in the game, but he doesn't have a party. And like, again, they also were very smart because they could work in Curse of Darkness so soon to Castlevania 3. And like it makes it very relevant and it makes it work really well. But like, I have no idea where the Castlevania anime is going to go after this. I hope that it continues because, God, I, I am a Castlevania fan who has been in a drought. It has been almost 10 years since the last real Castlevania game, you know? And, like, it's been longer since the last Castlevania game that's actually in canon with the universe that I care about. I think the anime has replaced, you know, 3's place in canon, but, like, God damn, I am starving here, Konami. But they don't care. Um, but rant aside, I've been Alfred. This has been Castlevania Lords of Shadow. Uh, I hope you all had a very good day. I hope you all had a good time. I certainly did. But I'll see you guys next time. Bye.